In this series of videos, we will read the Care Certificate Workbooks, both what you need to know and what do you know now. This video covers Standard 11, Safeguarding Children, What You Need to Know, and it's over to my colleague to read through this workbook. The Care Certificate, Safeguarding Children, What You Need to Know. Standard 11, The Care Certificate Workbook. Safeguarding Children. Child protection and safeguarding is everyone's responsibility. It is not only childcare workers that have a duty to promote the welfare of children and protect them from harm. When you come into contact with children in any way in your day-to-day -day work, it is part of your job to make sure that their well-being is safeguarded. Please note, this is in the workbook the term child and children includes any child or young person up to the age of 18. Child protection and safeguarding. Safeguarding is preventative and involves promoting the welfare of children by protecting them from harm and recognising the risks to their safety and security. Child protection is the activity of protecting children who are suffering or may be likely to suffer from significant harm as a result of abuse or neglect. What is child abuse? Child abuse is any wrongdoing that causes or is able to cause significant emotional or physical harm to a child. The following signs and symptoms and behaviours or indicators do not necessarily mean that a child is being abused, but may mean you have reason to be concerned. Physical abuse. This is any abuse where a child is physically harmed, for example, hitting, biting and burning. Signs and symptoms might be unexplained wounds, bruises or broken bones. The child might make up stories to explain the injuries or try to cover them up with clothing. Emotional abuse. This means a child's emotional needs are not being met. This could include being made to feel inadequate or not feeling loved and secure. A parent or carer may not be talking to them enough or giving them the attention they need. Typical signs and symptoms could include delays in development, speech disorders, or a fear of making mistakes or overreacting to them. Sexual abuse. This could include, this could involve children or young people being involved in sexual acts, being made to watch sexual acts, or being shown pornography. Sexual exploitation. Child sexual exploitation, CSE, means that children are manipulated sexually from the, for the abuser's benefit. Typical signs and symptoms include awareness and knowledge of sexual activities beyond what you would expect at their age, as well as genital or anal pain or itching or sexually transmitted diseases, STDs. Exploitation. Exploitation means taking advantage of someone's vulnerability to treat them badly or for the abuser's benefit. This is a form of abuse where the child's basic needs are not met. For example, through lack of food, medical attention, or access to education, poor clothing, housing, hygiene, or parenting. Neglect could sometimes be happening as a result of a child being the carer or a fa for a family member. Typical signs and symptoms may include always being hungry, poor personal hygiene, delays in development, tiredness, and looking ill and underweight. Radicalization. This is where Children and young people are taught extreme, often violent ideas based on political, social or religious beliefs. Signs of exposure to radicalization could be behavioural changes, changes in the way they speak with others or having a new circle of friends, use of extremist terminology and their reading material or messages. Child trafficking. This means recruiting, moving or receiving a child through force, trickery or intimidation to take advantage of them. Signs and symptoms could be dominating adult, accompanying the child at all times and speaking for them. The child could appear withdrawn, compliant, unkept, or show little or no use of the English language. Domineering. This term means to use power, influence, and or authority over others such to the extent that they cannot communicate or act freely. Female genital mutilation, FGM. FGM is a removal, constriction or other disfigurement of a girl's labia or clitoris for non-medical reasons, in most cases before they reach the age of eight. Some communities may use religious, social and cultural reasons to try to justify FGM, but it is a form of abuse. 
Signs and symptoms can range from severe pain and bleeding and chronic infections to psychological mental health and sexual problems or damage to the reproductive systems or infertility. You need to be aware of the risk of girls being taken abroad to carry out FGM and so you should be aware if they are taken on extended holidays. All forms of abuse are likely to create a change in behaviour of the victim. Behavioural changes include a child becoming withdrawn, timid, easily startled or maybe boisterous, aggressive, tension seeking or wanting to please. Depression, anxiety, self-harm, eating disorders and going back to younger behaviour. You might also have cause for concern if the child is not attending school regularly or is being admitted to several different A&E departments or GP drop-in centres. These could be ways for the abuser to cover up how often the child needs medical help. It is important to know that not all children will display the same symptoms and that usually there are more than one type of abuse happening, for example, both physical and emotional abuse. The impact of a parent's, carer's, physical and mental health or domestic violence on a child's well-being. To grow up happy and safe, children need parents or carers who love, protect and care for them in a stable, safe and secure home. Physical care and daily routines are important for development, so anything that upsets routines can be unhelpful. If a parent or carer's physical or mental health is poor, this could be a risk to the well-being of their child. It may increase their vulnerability or slow their development. It is important to remember that a parent or carer's health might affect their ability to safeguard, but this is not necessarily so. Examples of possible harm are a parent or carer with mental health issues might feel unable to build attachments with their child, possibly causing emotional harm, or the child might be forced into decision making that they are not ready for. A child with a parent or carer who is blind or deaf may be at increased risk of physical harm as they might not fully be able to judge the dangerous situation. Seeing or hearing acts of domestic violence can have a similar effect on children as being emotionally abused. As well as feeling helpless, they may not feel safe. Research suggests that there is a high likelihood that aggression by adults at home can turn towards children present. It also suggests that stress of experiencing violence at home can impair the brain development on babies. Domestic violence is a risk to the child's physical, emotional and social development. Children's rights. As a worker, you have a duty of care to make sure that rights of all individuals are promoted that include children's rights. You may not directly care or support children or young people, but through your work, you may, as well, you may well come into contact with them. It is important that you understand their rights. The Code of Conduct states that you should promote and upheld uphold the privacy, dignity and rights, health and well-being of people who use health and social care services and their carers. So it is important to remember that children or young people can be carers too. The Human Rights Act 1998 gives a number of fundamental rights to every person living in the UK. Some of these rights include the right to life, freedom from torture or degrading treatment, the right to education, the right to liberty and security, protection from discrimination. The United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, UNCRC, is a worldwide agreement between countries as to the basic rights that children under 18 should have. And then if you click on the link, you'll be able to get more information there. Some of the rights relating to child protection are the right to life, the right to live a healthy life, the right not to be separated from their parents unless they are at risk of harm, the right of protection from drugs, sexual abuse or any harm to their development. Article 39 specifies that children who have been neglected or abused should receive special support to restore their self-respect, such as counselling. Actions to take when abuse is suspected or alleged. Every worker who comes into contact with children or their families has a duty to safeguard them, even if they don't directly work with them. If you are worried about a child, report your concerns to your manager immediately. Make a record of your concerns that is factual and sign it and date it. 
If you feel that this process would be too slow, dial 999 and call the police. They can quickly remove a child to somewhere safe. Follow your organization's safeguarding policies and procedures. These will set out clearly how workers are to act when abuse is suspected or alleged. A child might tell you something, might tell someone that they have been abused or a family member, friend or worker or someone else might have an allegation about abuse happening or having happened in the past. Policies and procedures will give in information on signs and symptoms of abuse, how to respond to the victim, lines of reporting and important telephone numbers so that any worker can feel confident when dealing with an incident. Do not hesitate if you have any concerns about a child being abused. It is not your role to judge situations, that it is the responsibility of the police and the social workers, but if you don't alert them, they cannot act. Six C's, courage. Workers should have the courage and confidence to do what is morally right for protection of children and young people. Allegation. Making an allegation means stating that someone has done something. Allegations need to be reported and investigated to see whether they are true. So it is important that you do not jump to conclusions. If your concerns are not taken seriously and acted upon, you should either report them to a senior manager or the person responsible for child protection within your workplace. Child protection records should always be shared with the parents or carers unless they themselves are the cause for concern. Advice and support can come from other workers, your manager, the child's parent or carer, the NSPCC or local authority children's services. If an allegation is made against any volunteer, employee, childminder or anyone living in the child's home, your manager will undertake the appropriate action as set out in the organisation's agreed ways of working. This may mean contacting relevant agencies. This reporting of unsafe or illegal practice in the workplace is called whistleblowing and your organisation should have a specific whistleblowing policy and procedure in place. If your organisation is very small and does not have policies and procedures, then ask your employee about the agreed ways of working about whistleblowing. Internet and online social networking risks. The internet with its endless access to information is a valuable tool, but also a potential risk to safety and security. It is important to monitor or be aware of what ch the child sees and shares or could become exposed to. There is a high risk of being exposed to sexual predators, for example in chat rooms, pornography or radicalisation. Using e-technology to bully people has become an increasing problem in recent years, with over a third of young people having been affected at least once. The massive increase in online bullying is censored on the use of social media such as Twitter and Facebook which are easily accessible through mobile devices as well as computers. Examples include posting negative comments on someone's Facebook site, taking on someone's identity on the web to humiliate them, or harassing someone via their mobile phone. Legislation and safeguarding. When considering the welfare of children, there are several pieces of legislation that should be taken into account, as well as your own organization's policies and procedures and ways of working. Legislation. Legislation is the laws and regulations and the government's official guidance on how they are to be implemented. The Children's Act 1989 protects the welfare of children who are at risk. This tells you exactly what you need to do if you suspect a young person who is at risk of harm or in need of support. Okay, so we've got the um, .gov legislation website there. The Children Act 2004. This act covers services that children and young people may access. It places a duty on local authorities and their pa partners to cooperate, cooperate and make sure that services work together and, where possible, have a joint plan developed in partnership with parents, children and young people. This is known as the Common Assessment Framework, CAF. The Act also encourages the establishment of local safeguarding boards and joint databases. Okay, and we can see that on the legislation.gov website. The Sexual Offences Act 2003. 
This act has two parts. The first one states what is considered a sexual offence, including physical and non-physical contact. It defines what are sexual offences against children under 13 and under 16, and sets the age of consent at 16 in most cases. However, if an adult holds a position of trust in relation to the young person, for example, as their worker, teacher, trainer, the age of consent is 18. The second part of the Act deals with sex offenders register and civil protective orders. Okay, so you can see the information there. The Care Act 2014 brings care and support legislation together into a single Act with new wellbeing principles at its heart. Although the Care Act is meant for adults in need of support and their carers, it also makes some provisions for children and young carers. Children who care for their parents in their own home are made part of the, pa the parents' needs assessment in order to establish the support and, help they, and the help they need. The Children and Families Act 2014 provides young carers with the same help and support as adult carers. All carers under the age of 18 have the right to have their support needs assessed and local authorities must help them care for a family member as best they can. Great work on finishing this What You Need to Know booklet. In this series, we also have the What You Need to Know activity booklet that follows on from this video.